I'm E.G. Marshall. It's only human, I expect, to envy the wealthy, the successful, the newsworthy. Yes, all these advantages are something to be a little jealous of, but only up to a point. Beyond that, a host of problems, very different from ours, and far more disturbing and deadly, haunt the fabulously rich, the superstar, the headline maker. Could you imagine, for example, this happening to you or your sister or your daughter? Go ahead in, Bill. After you, Senator. Have a look at this package. I found it waiting with the mail when I got home. Italy. Postmark Naples. You want me to open the box? You're younger and tougher than I am. I don't think it'll make you throw up. finger with a ring on it. Jake's ring. Jake's finger. We can check the print, but I know it's his. But this came from Naples. Your daughter Lynn's supposed to be in Rome. Why would... You think Jake is dead? I don't know. I don't even know if Lynn is still alive. <laughs> mystery drama, See Naples and Die, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Michael Wager. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Senator Henry Chalmers Winstead, born 1918 of a wealthy and distinguished family, which contained in its history one Secretary of the Treasury, eight congressmen, several judges. Senator Winstead, chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, and certainly his party's nominee to run for the next President of the United States, a man to be envied, Let's find that out from someone who knows him perhaps best of all, Bill Desmond. When the senator calls, I jump. He's that kind of man. He never orders, just asks. You never refuse. Not out of fear or ambition, out of respect, admiration. And if you'll accept the word in its proper context, love. That's why I was there, looking with a churning stomach at that grisly present from Naples and listening to the phone ring. I want you to listen in on this, Bill. Take it in my study. But don't let her know she's being monitored. Senator, if it's Lynn, I Please, don't... Please, Bill. Everything I have in the world may be at stake. Okay, sir, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, this is Senator Winstead. I want to talk to Miss Beth Chalmers. If there's any question... Tell her that her father insists on talking to her. I hurried into the senator's study and picked up his extension quietly without any telltale click. You learn a lot about that sort of thing these days in Washington. They had just started to talk. Lynn? Yes, Daddy? There really isn't anything funny about this, Lynn. Why did you refuse to take my call? Well, I thought you might be some smart aleck reporter that is. Well, what's the phrase of choice today? Cracked my cover. Blown it. Oh, is that all? What else? Where are you, Dad? In Washington. Was something wrong? You can tell me that in person. I want you home on the next plane. Lynn, did you hear me? How could I miss? So did most of Rome. May I ask you why I'm being bullied like a witness before one of your subcommittees? If it hadn't been for special circumstance, I wouldn't have been soft enough to allow you to go barging around Europe alone and... Well, confounded, I really despise the word. Incognito. <laughs> but it's such a lovely word. It's so romantic. It's my affair. The word 
I get from my sources is exactly that. A fair. Daddy, I'm 25 years old. Isn't that way beyond the time it's anyone else's business? Vittorio Tedesco is a criminal. Why? He's been cited by one of my subcommittees for income tax evasion. <laughs> Who isn't these days? Well, now, that's pretty childish for 25, Lynn. And you're pretty damn self-righteous. How'd you feel if Vic and I came on home and got married? You'd do me a favor. Bring him. The moment he sets foot on U.S. soil, he'll be indicted for income tax evasion, and that's only the beginning. You don't know Vic, Dad. I think you've been witch hunting too long. What you... I'm beginning to feel is that I'm hunting one right now. You get yourself home here alone, or I'll come and get you. With Congress in session? Aren't you afraid the country would fall apart without you? I... I'm sorry, Daddy, but you can't make me jump like all the disciples anymore. I'm going to do what you did. I'm going to make my own life. Don't you hang up on me. Mom left me independent. You brought me up to be that way. Nobody knows who I am here, and, and I'm about to get out of your way for good, and I won't surface till you have everything you want. Ciao. Lynn? Lynn? Damn it. Bill, you still on? Yes, sir. Better get in here. What we need is a council of war. Why didn't you tell her? What about Jake? She had no idea I sent Jake off to keep an eye on her. But we're not going to sit here and do nothing. Well, of course not. There's more to that box than... Than that obscenity I showed you. Here, read this. I find your daughter irresistible. Also, fortunately, she feels the same way about me. Since I feel I'm a little old for her, I hope we never have to use that lever. Why don't you let me go right over now and take care of that dirty... That's what I want, Bill. But I couldn't be the one to suggest it. Maybe we'd be better off just hollering copper. Finish the note. What evidence? What proof do we have? Well, the note came with a finger, didn't it? Oh, no. Completely separately. Read. I think you might want to reach me after you read this. Any evening between 12 and 1 a.m. Washington time, I will try to reach you at Rose's hideaway. The phone is safe. Marriage, naturally, is not the only option. Unless we can make a bargain. I hope Jake put his finger on that. No signature. And typed. And no doubt who it's from. Vittorio Tedesco? Yes. What's his price? Quash the income tax indictment against him, I suppose. Could you? I... Can't, in all honesty. Are you even considering this proposition? <sighs> Jake Muldoon was my sergeant at the invasion of Truck. If it hadn't been for his hand in the way, a Japanese bayonet would have cut my throat. My daughter is all I have left from a family that once had a wife and two sons as well. I lost them all to violence. Ella to cancer... Jim and Grant in two wars, Korea and Vietnam. I have no family left but Lynn. And you and Jake. What else can I do? Push the button. Call in everyone, including the Marines. Well, it's a consideration. Except they already have Jake. But not Lynn. You heard the phone call, Bill. I can't stop Lynn from marrying that gangster if she wants to. Now it would raise such a smell, your whole candidacy would go out the window. I can't quash the indictment against him, nor would I even try. Except for Lynn. Oh, Lord. What am I going to do, Bill? Stall. What good can that do? Give me time to fly to Italy. 48 hours. Oh, risk my last friend. I don't know. Bring it all out in the open is the right way for me. No. Not till you take that phone call. The witching hour. Well, let's head for the witch at Rose's hideaway and check out just what Tedesco really expects to get. 
Senator Winstead, in spite of his prominence and enormous know-how, is a babe in arms when it comes to the dirty work. That's my department. I was halfway to being a lawyer when my folks tangled with a truck. There was only enough insurance to bury them. And I had a kid sister and brother to bring up, so I became a cop. Eight years later, my kid sister and brother were independent, and under the police program, I got my lawyer's degree. While I was getting it, I met Lynn Winstead and her father. It was a case of love at first sight all the way around. What we all should have had was second sight. To see where it was leading us. Don't be shy, fellas. Just waltz on in. This is a friendly inferno. And just super hell for kicks. The door on the left's my office. Just head for there. I'm Earl, Senator. I was expecting you, not the BF. This is my administrative assistant, Bill Desmond. I don't go for consuls. Except on your side. No rods in here. I have a license for it, Rosebud. Well, don't let my name at a club fool you, Mac. I wanted to, I could take it away from you. No need. We're only here for a phone call. The senator, not you. Bill is in on all of this. I brought him in. I don't know, but... Hold it. Just remember, this is my territory. No funny moves. Like otherwise, the morning paper gets a tip. Senator Winstead was frequenting a gay bar. You'll forget it, Bill. Yeah. No, that's fine. Put it through. Then switch it on my office phone. A certain party looking to reach you, Senator. Now, next time this phone rings, he'll be on the line from overseas. You want to tell your bully boy here to join me at the bar for a drink? So as you can have some privacy? Think I'll be safe? As long as you're under Mother Rose's wing. Go with him, Bill. I'll take the call. But I want Bill if I need him. You hear that? Yes, sir. We'll handle him with TLC. Tender loving care, sir. It's the uh, nurse's credo. It had better be the way you're handled. Hello? A call from Naples? It's your call, Senator. Come on, Desmond. Who's talking? I don't have to ask who you are. The voice is enough identification. You really have to ask who I am? No, but can we stop the games? As you've set it up, there's no way this phone call can be monitored. That was the idea. So let's not waste time. Jake, you all right? I'd have thought your daughter would be your first concern. She is. If you've got her, you gave me proof enough you have Jake. Let's cut your worries. I have them both, Senator. Jake against his will, as you can imagine. Your daughter, that's another story. What do you want, Tedesco? I want back to America. My skirt's clean. That income tax evasion judgment reversed. I want to be a free citizen. And you can do it. And if I can't? I'll send you your friend Jake piece by piece. I'll marry your daughter and make sure you couldn't be elected dog catcher. I, um, I need time. How do I get in touch with you? I'll call here tomorrow and the day after, same time. If you're not there 48 hours from now, well, I sent you Jake's finger because I wanted to be sure you understood we weren't playing any games. I'd hate to get into the same sort of thing with your daughter. But I, uh, I have too much at stake to have any scruples. You'll have my answer within 48 hours. If you feel you must wait. But what else can it be? This wouldn't or couldn't happen to you. Or me. Ordinary people are not called upon to make extraordinary decisions normally. But how will Senator Henry Chalmers Winstead react? Which of his lives, public or private, is the more important? We'll return shortly with Act Two. It's been a sleepless night for Bill and the Senator. And seven precious hours are gone before the senator has finally agreed to let Bill fly to Rome. It's a slim chance because Lynn has already checked out of her hotel with no forwarding address. 
Now, waiting at the airport to catch the first plane out, Bill is joined unexpectedly at the airport. What are you doing here, Senator? I threw a little weight around last night and dug up the number Tedesco called from. Naples. Uh, Spezia 54368. Got it. I should be going myself. Oh, sure. They'd spot you for sure. And some smart reporter would have a headline like... Daughter's torch lights fire under Senator Winstead by fiddling around in Rome. You can't afford to lose a nomination with publicity like that. I can't afford to lose a daughter. You're not going to. And here am I. I just discovered I'm still carrying my torch. I must really love her when I can even think of forgiving her for falling for a crook like that. Don't underestimate him. He's a very charming man. He's a crook. I talk about his manners, you, his morals. The only thing we ever could get him on was tax fraud. Why didn't we grab him in time? A lot of mistakes, Bill. Why didn't you grab Lynn when you could have? <laughs> no guts. My daughter scared you? Enough. But not all the way. You. Me? You're a large legend to live up to, Senator. Anyone in your family lives in a glass cage, which isn't much protection. How do you expect to locate Lynn? I'm heading for that Spezia telephone number in Naples. I got some channels of my own. Watch your step, Bill. He fights dirty. So do I. I came from the same slums. <laughs> Flight was a milk run, but Rome was strictly a washout. So I took the Rapido for Naples. A Spezia phone number turned out to be a waterfront joint called Tia Madalena. Bingo. Right off the bat, Lynn was sitting at a table with Vic. I was headed for them when about 220 pounds of muscle and tuxedo got in my way. Buonasera, signore. E benvenuta a Zia Madalena. I am Guillermo. The senor wishes to sit at the bar. The senor wishes to join Mr. Tedesco. You are a friend of his? No, the ladies. Ah, but the evening is warm. Tonio, take his coat. <laughs> Don't try to move, amigo. Just a little what you call a precaution. A frisk. Old American custom. Guillermo... You can call me Willie. Let him go, Tonio. He's clean now. The all-American type. Thanks for making me feel at home. I can find my own way. Thanks. <laughs> Beth Chalmers. Imagine bumping into you. Bill. I hope I'm not breaking up anything or something like that. No, no, not at all, uh, Bill, senor. Bill, how, how did you... Oh, excuse me, Vic. This is an old friend of the family, Bill Desmond. Vic Tedesco. How are you, Mr. Desmond? Do you uh, expect to be in Naples long, Senor Desmond? Oh, no, I just came here to pick up a couple of packages. I hope to get the first train out. Oh. Well, we were just going to have a brandy. Will you join us? Oh, I don't think that... Uh... Matter of fact, I was going to ask... Beth to join me in a dance. Why don't you, Beth? Oh, you sure you don't mind, Vic? No, 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 not at all. All right. As a matter of fact, I have some business to attend to. Please, enjoy yourselves. But I'll, uh, I'll be jealous of every moment you're away, Carissima. I, uh, expect to marry La Signorina. So treat her very carefully, huh? you to get out of here. Just as soon as you do. Oh, I'm not leaving. So be a good little bird dog and stick your tail between your legs and run back to Dad and tell him it's no good. I agree. The whole thing stinks. I don't want to talk about it. Then why are you dancing with me? Well, I was afraid you'd tell Vic who I really am. He knows, knucklehead. He knows. No, he doesn't. He thinks... Where are you taking me? The terrace. Out! I'm not going. That's what you think. Bill, you hurt me just now. What do you think you're doing to your father? Dad? He can take care of himself. He's above us all in an ivory tower. And don't talk to me about his career. For 25 years, that's all I've ever lived. My father's life. Never my own. I've had to fight off charlatans, lounge lizards, fortune hunters, and social climbers. And as for any real man... 
The very thought of trying to live up to my father has turned them off. You ought to know that. Well, it didn't turn Vic off because he doesn't know who I am. I'm just the girl he loves. Can't you understand that? For once I know I'm loved for myself alone. Oh, Lynn, what do you use for a brain? He doesn't love you. He just wants to use you. How? To blackmail your father. Oh, he'll be ridiculous. He doesn't know who my father is. And Vic doesn't need money. He's got all the money. It isn't the money he wants. Then what? He needs your father's influence. To suppress the evidence against him on an income tax indictment. What are you trying to do to me, Bill? I'm just trying to get it through your fat head. That if I thought you were dancing. Enjoying the view? Not particularly. Not what I'm looking at, anyway. Now, that's not very polite. Apparently, Mr. Desmond doesn't care for me. I suppose he's been trying to tell you what a monster I am. Oh, it doesn't matter what he's been saying, because I don't believe him. You might as well know that that once I gave Mr. Desmond the gate, and he seems to be suffering from a bad case of sour grapes. Oh, well, Beth, I'm sorry. Don't let him spoil our evening, huh? It's already spoiled. I'd like to go back to my hotel, please. I'll go along with you and see that you get packed. I think you have a train to catch, Mr. Desmond. Guglielmo, prenda la signora Macasino e quietela con l'altro, eh? Si. Guglielmo will take you to the train. Now, just a minute. I brought to your coat and the package you checked. Okay, Willie, don't crowd me. I know when I'm licked. Arrivederci, Beth. The word for us in Italian or... Or any other language is goodbye. Come on, Vic. Oh, don't you worry. I won't let you out of my sight again. In Italian, she meant addio, Mr. Desmond. I always wanted a trench coat like this here. Yeah. Good all-purpose coat and real handy for covering a gunner. Which is covering you, so uh, let's just play it cool, huh? And why not, Willie? My girl just stood me up. You and me can go steady now. A clown. That's me, Willie. Always good for a laugh. So, which way to the warehouse? You speak Italian, huh? I know a magazine ain't no train. Down the steps to the end of the terrace. And just take it easy. I wouldn't want a cold turkey. I like the view better from up on the terrace. Yeah, real pretty town. I was born in Napoli. You like the place? My most favorite. What is it they say? See Naples and die. Like I said, a clown. Now, uh, just slide in easy, under the wheel, and back into the corner. Okay. Now, cross your hands and put them up there above the dashboard. Well, that's a good boy. And now, you move one finger, and I put a bullet in your gut. Is that what you did with Jake Muldoon? No. Nope. With him, we just removed the finger. <laughs> That's a hot one, ain't it? Funny, Willie. Real funny. I guess the real clown is you. Bill Desmond. Well, glory be to God, ain't you the sight for sore eyes? Jake Muldoon. Okay, Jake, you got company. Why don't the two of you have a party? See you for breakfast in the morning. What are you doing here? We got your message, Jake. How's the hand? Oh, I can get along without the finger. But I won't be able to wear the ring anymore. It was Sheila's class graduation. God rest her soul. Don't worry. The senator has the ring. What about Lynn? Oh, I'm so ashamed of myself the way I was taken. Right now, I'm more ashamed of Lynn the way she's let herself be taken. Have you seen her? I have. Maybe I shook her up a little. How do we get out of this, Jake? What do you mean, the room? I don't see no way. We're four floors up, and there's only that skylight I can't reach, and the angle is so steep, you'd never be able to climb to the roof. This uh, window. Uh, you see the crossbars outside? I can see something else. What? There's a pole for the power lines not so far off. If I could get out the skylight, I might be able to jump to it. Yeah, it has foot braces all the way down. We'll try it. 
I need this table. Me on top, and you on top of me. I may have a bad hand, but I still have a good pair of shoulders. But I'm not going to leave you behind, Jake. Since I lost my Sheila two years ago, there's only been the senator, you, and his little girl. I'm expendable, Bill. Like we used to say in the forces. Well, this isn't the army, Jake. At least they had a kind of decency. There's none here. And I'm looking to do more than try to rescue Lynn from her own pig-headedness. I want to nail that over six godfather at the same time. You think I ain't with you on that? Do you know where Lynn is staying here in Naples? Well, sure. Digging that out was what got me nabbed. Okay. Now, if I can just get out of here, I think maybe I could get us all out of this. Including the senator. If Lynn will cooperate. She always walked in your footsteps and worshipped the dust blew out of them. <laughs> Not for some time. Sure. She was only waiting to be asked back. And when you didn't, what would she do but tempt you a little, get your dander up? Well, maybe you're right. Get up on the table, Jake. Here. I'll help. <laughs> Brace yourself against the wall. All right, I am. Can you close your good hand over the other wrist? Okay, give me a lift up. Uh, I'm going up on your shoulders. Oh, oh. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Let's see. You got it open? Yeah. I can get up on the frame and jump for the pole. How, how are you getting me up there? I'm not. Huh? You couldn't make the jump, not with that hand. Anyway, I've got to come back tonight and be here in the morning. If my scheme works. Give me the hotel address and the room number. It's a long jump. Suppose you don't make it. To coin an old Air Force joke, you'll just have to repeat slowly over me, Our Father who art in heaven. The classic escape. Will the hero's desperate leap bring him safety? Or will he smash to death on the cobblestones 40 feet below? Except that isn't the real question in this story. What has to be saved is the career of a senator who aspires to the highest honor his country can offer. I'll return shortly with Act Three. It's the old analogy of the snowball or the dominoes, the chain reaction. A man with no integrity uses a lever to force a man of integrity to give in to his demands. When he doesn't, the man with no scruples goes further and further to win what he wants. While Bill Desmond is risking his life to save the senator's future, Lynn, the girl he loves, is finding out what risk her headstrong selfishness has put her in. Vic, if you really love me, let's pack up right now. Let's go home and get married. Hey, 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 subito, pigeon. What do we do about your father? What does that mean? Uh, how long do we have to keep up the pretense, huh? Beth? Or shall I say the real name? Lynn Winstead. So you do know who I am? Oh, your ex Amour gave it away. That isn't true. You've known from the beginning, haven't you? Suppose I have. So Bill was right. You've just been using me. You think my father can quash the indictment against you? Like that. And I go all dewy-eyed on me, Angel. Those things are done every day. A business proposition. Give a little, take a little. We're done, you mean? I'm growing up fast. I was fool enough to think it was only me you were interested I in. I was. I am. Don't sell it short. I'm getting my eyes opened, all right. But I'm not kidding myself anymore. I'm not going to marry you, Vic. So? Well, I'll just have to hold you for ransom. <laughs> you really are what Bill said you were. You're a gangster and a crook, and now a blackmailer. <laughs> Our names don't faze me, sugar. The means, the means are all I care about, and I got them to spare. Your father, the big Lily White Crusader with the next nomination in his pocket, and the big, big job dangled in front of him like a carrot on a stick. Well, I'm the stick, baby. I can jerk away that carrot. If he wouldn't come through for me, I love the idea of hitting back at him with those headlines. Senator Winstead's daughter, wife of exiled crook. You named me. You'll never be able to do that now. Oh, I got a lot of ways to go. I got you sewed up seven ways from nowheres, Mia Amore. I'm not going to outline them all. 
couple you don't even know about, but I'm giving you a night to sleep on it. Now, you get in touch with your old man and close his papers on me, or he's going to find out he doesn't have a daughter anymore. I didn't know about all this then. I was too busy making the jump, which turned out to be easier than finding my way back to Naples and Lynn's hotel. And getting into it unnoticed. It wasn't hard to see that Vic had it well staked out. But 4,000 lira got me in the trash exit and another odd two up the service elevator to the right floor. Not bad for under 10 deflated American bucks. Who is it? You alone? Lynn? Yes? Who is it? Bill! Let me in before the house dick picks me up for a peeping Tom. Bill! It is you! Oh, but wait a minute. Glad I am. You're, hey, listen, let's close the door before the house clerk raises the room rents. Oh, you're just the most beautiful thing I ever saw. Well, you still are the same for me. Maybe you'd better let me in on how you change your mind so fast. I uh, won't go into the next 15 minutes or hour or whatever it was, except that it brought us both up to date on a lot of things. Nothing new for you on my side, and nothing that really matters from Lynn until a real whopper. We've got a million things to do, but I happen to get lucky. I've got a friend who's a purser on the Majestic which sails tomorrow from Naples for Barcelona, Lisbon, and Madrid. He's holding two staterooms for us, one for you and one for Jake and me. Now, all I've got to do is get Jake out of that warehouse. I can get by Vic's watchdogs, but we've got to figure out also how to smuggle you out. Yeah. And... Bill. What? It's no good. Oh, honey, this is no time to back out. If I can just get us all on board that boat safe and sound, we're all home free. No, you, me, Jake, even... Even in spite of what they did to him. But not Dad. Why not? Oh, Bill, I'm so ashamed of myself. I've been such a... Oh, prime jerk. Such a fool. Okay, but now you've come to your senses. No, you don't understand. <laughs> Before I came to my senses, I was in Rome, and, and Vic was in Naples, and, and there was some kind of court thing that kept him from going anywhere in Italy, but here... Damn good thing, kept him away from you. No, except that he kept writing me letters, and I... You... You wrote him back. Oh, what kind of letters? That's what I'm ashamed of. I, I don't know what happened to me, Bill, but I lost a lot more than my heart over here. Some of the things that that I said in those letters, I I wouldn't want anyone to see again. Not even me. And he's threatening to release them to every punk magazine and yellow rag in the U.S. if you don't get Papa to come through with clearing him. My papers for his papers. That's his threat. Lane, you are a dope. Now, what in the name of... Wait a minute. What is it? Silence, dope. A genius is at work. <laughs> You're sure you understand? Yes. It's your chance to wipe everything out. Make up for every half-baked thing you've done. Think you can pull it off? I'd better. Uh Uh-huh. Yes, but how can you trust a dope? Well, because that's what you've got going for you. Oh, Vic still has every reason to think you're one. Thanks. It's okay. You're my favorite dope. (laughs) So, you got your desk's number, huh? Yes, it's Betsy. Three. No, no, I'm going to do it all by myself for once. Now, remember, not till 10 o'clock tomorrow night. I've got to get Jake and me out of the coop and have time to sneak aboard. Shh, shh, shh. Pronto. Oh, Vic, it's Lynn. Oh, hello, Lynn. Eating pretty late hours, huh? <laughs> I just got through calling Dad, and I... I told him everything. So what do I expect? The Marine landing to rescue you? The CIA? The local police? No, no, no. He's agreed to what you want. Everything. Only one way, baby. I want him here. I want a piece of paper from him in his handwriting with witnesses. You can have it tomorrow. How? Well, there's some gossip circulating around Washington about us already. So, Dad booked me a passage on the Majestic, sailing from here tomorrow night, in the name of Beth Chalmers. So, 
You think I'd let you leave just like that? No, Dad's flying in, secretly, later today. He's hitching a ride with the MATS. And from the military airport, he'll get down here by helicopter. He'll be in my cabin by 9 p.m. You just bring the letters with you and... And he'll make the deal. What time does the boat sail? Not till midnight. Why not my place? Oh, Vic, he he can't take a chance. He's going to be suppressing evidence. Well, well, why should I take a chance? What chance are you taking? We're the ones. Dad and me are caught in the sleeve. We've got to keep this under wraps. Okay, baby, you got a deal. But just remember, I'm not coming alone. I'll be there with plenty of protection. Well, I'll leave visitor's passes for you at the gate. It's Pier 12, Cabin 24, A deck. Ten o'clock. Now make it four passes, and I'll be there. Oh, I've, I've been so scared. How can I thank you? I'm not coming for you, baby. I'm coming to watch the senator crawl. Coming. You brought it off. With three of his gunmen. We'll take care of them. And you. Oh, I don't know, Bill. I I feel somehow so dirty. Well, I... it's a dirty league, and this linen couldn't be washed in public. Now, I gotta get back to jail before they know I'm on the loose. See you on the boat. Oh. By the way, you have an extra pair of pantyhose you could lend me? If the situation hadn't been so tense, I could have laughed out loud at the expression on Lynn's face. But there wasn't time for anything except what had to be done. I sneaked out of the hotel the same way I got in, carrying with me the pantyhose, two oval bars of Lynn's scented soap, and a coil of rope from one of the fire stations. I spotted what looked like one of Vic's men at the back door, hid in the shadows. Until he stopped to light a cigarette, turning away into the wind. And I was around the corner and gone. Back to the warehouse and my career as a prisoner. Jake. Jake. That's you, Bill? Yeah. Look out. There's a rope coming through the skylight. Okay. Got it. Pull it tight and hitch it to something solid. I'm coming across and back in. After I got in... From Jake's shoulders, I unhitched the noose and the rope after a couple of flips from where I'd had it around one of the foot bars on the power pole. I hid it carefully under one of the beds. I'd need it later to lower Jake with his bad hand. I'd go out the same way as I had tonight. With the soap bar and the legs of the pantyhose, we had two blackjacks. We hid those safely. Now all we had to do was wait out the day and act like model prisoners. <laughs> Well, will you look at the two dukes sleeping like they was babes? Hey, wake up, you bums. Oh, oh but John Guillermo. Okay, cut out the humor. I brought you both some grub. And this here's Tonio. He and a friend will bring you your dinner around six. Then, guess what? There's a file in the cake you baked. Like I said, a clown. This time, you ain't beating your gums. Out of the goodness of the boss's heart, you'll all be on your own tomorrow morning. Well, in case I shouldn't see you again, ciao. Come on, Tony. You may not see me, Willie, but you'll hear from me. Tony heard the first bells that night as he brought our food. A bar of soap in the toe of a sock is as effective as it's safe. It worked equally well on the two uglies Vic left behind in the dock. Jake told me later. By that time, I was already in Lynn's cabin, waiting behind the door. Vic. Oh, I was afraid you wouldn't get here. Wouldn't have missed it. Ten on the nose. You have the letters? Right here. Oh, good, then. Come on in. Meet my father. Got your rod, Willie? Yeah. I think we'll just let Willie check things out first, all right? <laughs> Go ahead. You can trust him to keep his mouth shut. Va. Okay. There ain't nobody else here. That's what you think. The double cross. Don't move toward his gun, Desmond. I got one, too. 
I'd like to ram it right down your lion little throat, sweetheart. All right, now the three of us are just going to stroll out real casually. And this time, no surprises. Oh. Jake! Hey, Miss Winstead. Long time no see. I don't think I hit Willie quite hard enough, Jake. Would you like to do the honors? With pleasure. <clears throat> Didn't I tell you, you ugly spalpeen, you'd be hearing from me again? <laughs> I feel as if I'd just broken out of a spider web. Nothing like a sea breeze to blow away all kinds of cobwebs. I wonder how Vic and Willie are enjoying the voyage. Are they actually under arrest? That was the whole plan. Beyond the three-mile limit, this ship becomes American soil. The grand jury issued the warrant yesterday, and technically the captain can execute that warrant now. And what about Willie? Well, he's a stowaway. And he's got a record a mile long. By the time we get home, they'll be rearrested, convicted, and clapped in jail where they belong. Let's forget about them. But how could you ever forgive me? Or forget? Well, we made up the story that your father was going to be here when he wasn't. Let's say the letters and all the rest. Never happened either. I don't deserve to get out of trouble so easily. Who said you did, lady? You don't know the trouble you're headed for. Jake, keeping a faithful watchdog's eye on them from behind a ventilator, turns away. A nice-looking couple, he's thinking. Won't the senator be pleased? And what the hell he says to himself, it was worth it all to have a finger in the pie. I'll be back shortly. By the time Lynn and Bill had gone below for a nightcap, Jake had circled around and taken their place at the rail. Putting one arm along it, he could almost feel the wraith of his own Sheila, warm and loving, nestling in it. The Lord taketh away, but the Lord giveth. Lynn and Bill were his children, and the senator was his, well, why not his father? Wasn't that the name they gave the first president? Our cast included Michael Wager, Marion Seldes, Larry Haynes, Dan Ocko, and Ken Harvey. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. She was a priestess in the temple of Apollo at Delphi. And she fell in love with me. Hey, Pop Pop, you, you know the sun's getting hot out here. Maybe you ought to get in. Anyhow, you, you swallow a few grains and you go into a deep trance. And when you come to or wake up, it's hundreds of years later. Oh, rave on. Pop. Now, now make plans to break out, Augie. Quickly before they come for you. Go get your gold. Sure, get the gold. And then where do I hide? You can hide anywhere. A secluded spot, a, a cave, a forest, a, a desert. Yeah, great. And what do I do for chow? I'm trying to explain this, Augie. You don't eat. You don't drink. You don't have any wants. You, you have no needs. You're oblivious to cold, to heat, to rain, to, to snow. And in several hundred years, you come alive again. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs> 